haven't been in the saddle for a little bit. Uh, sorry about that, but here I am. We're going to uh, talk about chord spellings today. Chord spellings may sound a little bit dry. You've got to know them. And not only the spelling, but the function of the chord. Uh, how the chord functions within a key. The reason that it's easier to consider and think of. We're going to uh, look at the key of C. So key of C scale. And our one chord is a C major 7, which is spelled from the first degree of the C major scale. Now, in this case, we're doing four note chords, and they're going to sound a little bit more complex, a little bit more jazzy, if you will. Okay, that's sort of where we're heading uh, with the play along tracks to come after, uh, afterward. So we have C, E, G, and B. That gives us a C major seven chord set. Yeah, it's just through two octaves. So the one chord is a C major seven. I'm just playing it in arpeggio form, chord form. Okay, and then the two chord is built on the second degree of the scale. The same thing is going to apply the same process to every key. Uh, and as I said at the, at the top, we're just trying to keep it simple by looking at the key of C, the natural notes, right? So D minor 7, right? And those notes are D, F, A, and C, 1, 3, 5, 7. And if we take it, right, if we take it a little bit further, it's still just the same four notes. I'm just playing them through, uh, through the whole position. Okay, so that's the two chord. So we have the one chord, the two chord, and then the five chord built on the fifth degree of the scale. So here we have G, B, D, F in that lower octave, or we have G, B, D, F in an upper octave. my five chord. So I now I've got a one chord, a two chord, a five. All right. Now, though that's the that's the chord spellings and and so what you'll notice is that in each case we have a chord and underneath the chord we have an arpeggio. We have a chord have an arpeggio we have a chord and, and an arpeggio and then back so that's the spellings uh, but the function we have function down down here at the bottom the the one chord functions as a tonic chord so that means a state of resolution these other two chords want to resolve to that one chord and you can hear that. It's a state of resolution. Uh, I'm using that word because it's the word we use in, in, in studying harmony. It's, it's a musical word. And then uh, tension, also used uh, in, in the study of, of harmony and composition. Uh, tension is uh, two chord, uh, subdominant. It's called a subdominant chord. I'm not going to get into the t complete you know, minutia of what that means. Just take take my word for it. It's called the subdominant chord. And, uh, and the notes in this subdominant chord want to return to the one chord or go to the five chord and then return to the one, one chord. Okay, so we have a subdominant, which is sort of a medium tension. Then we have a dominant chord. The dominant chord has the most tension, the five chord. It has the most tension because it has a, um, a tritone in it uh, that the, the, the distance from the F to the B wants to resolve like that. The, this uh, the, this uh, a fourth degree falling to the, to the third degree and this seventh degree resolving to the one and that's
that's going to be found in in the uh, in the movement from from uh, from the five to the one chord. Okay, so each one of these chords has a different level of tension. Why do you want to know this stuff? Um, if you if you want to play in in um, you know, in in the in a jazzier style, and any even even pop, uh, you know, uh, uh, gypsy jazz, whatever. Uh, this is this kind of information is going to and understanding. It's not just information. It's a matter of understanding how music works and how harmony works, and how these fundamentals of resolution and tension and function work. Uh, and, and that will greatly assist you in, in memorizing tunes. And we're going to look at a tune right, right after this. Uh, and, and that will assist you in, in building a repertoire and soloing over, over the material at the same time. Okay, so one chord, two chord, and a five chord. Uh, the most common chord progression in, uh, in jazz standards is a two five one right a two chord and then five to the one two to the five to the one those you can hear that that the tension you can build tension and release the tension it's it, that that that's what harmony is all about that's what chord progression is all about there is no progression there is no movement without tension and resolution okay now uh, let's let's take a look at a chart here is a classic jazz standard and we're going to take a look at chord spelling in real time with this jazz standard. Um, I, this is a song that I've played quite a bit, and, and it's, it's, it's popular in the, in the gypsy jazz uh, uh, repertoire as well as the straight swing repertoire. Uh, and it has been played by, by thousands of players. So it's a really good, uh, good tune to, to start with. So we're going to take a look at sort of a harmonic real-time on the fretboard harmonic analysis of this. As I just said, uh, one of the most, uh, the most common chord progression in the jazz genre is a 2-5-1. And here we start with a 2-5-1. That means that this D minor 7 chord with a flat 5, which we're going to discuss very briefly, um, D minor seven flat five to the G seven to the C major is a two chord to a five chord to a one chord. So it's this progression that I just played to five to one, except we have a D minor seven with a flat five. Uh, and let's just look at the next, the next four measures as well. We have another D minor seven flat five to a G seven uh, to a one. Uh, so you've got the first eight measures memorized by simply uh, uh, recognizing the, the two five one uh, progression, right? Okay. Um, now let's talk about let's talk about this flat five a little bit. Uh, the, the flat five doesn't is not derived from the um, C major scale. There is no a flat note or flat five in the case of, of the D minor seven chord. There is no A flat note in the key of C major if we're deriving these chords from C major, which we are. But this one's a bit of an anomaly, and that, uh, and that anomaly can be explained, and I'll go into this in greater detail later, but this anomaly can be explained by the fact that it comes from uh, the parallel minor key, and that parallel minor key would be, um, uh, would be C minor. If I were to play a C minor scale, there's the right. 
it fits. It's the two chord in the key of C minor. Okay, good. Enough said on that right now. I'll, I'll touch. I'll touch on more of that a little bit later. So, um, so let's spell the chord. Okay, uh, we're we're going to spell it on the fretboard. We know that. Uh, D minor 7 uh, chord is, uh, th this is the arpeggio. Okay, and, and so here is uh, the 1, uh, the root of the chord. Why don't we go up to the 7 like this. Right, there's my 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There's my flat seven and then the flat three. Right there on the on the top is is the F, and then we can we can uh, put in the flat five. And then G seven, you can look at it the same way. One, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven, and the three on top. Then the resolution to the one, one, three, five, seven. Here, how about we do this? One, the major seven, because it's a that's the spelling of the chord, and then the three on top, and we'll add a five as well. Now, it's it's it, what I'm getting at here is trying to get away from thinking in pictures. I, I could go into a lot more detail, but that would be like an hour long lesson for just the chord spellings. Uh, but what I'm getting at is if you're going to um, play chords, don't play them as pictures uh, because you can't translate those pictures, you know, a chord picture to a single note line or an arpeggio. Uh, it, uh, you, you have to be able to break down this stuff to its, to its most uh, fundamental uh, components um, or elemental components maybe. D minor 7, flat 5, here's the 1, the flat 5, the uh, flat 7, or the minor 7, and the flat 3. Okay, and then uh, G7, flat, flat 7, 3, and that it resolves to the to C in this case, or, or the major 7. So we have this chord progression in this position. And then now we know we repeat that. F sharp minor seven flat five. Here's an F sharp, right? I'm just gonna play in the middle four strings. Here's an F sharp, here's that flat five, right? Because we've already done this one here, D minor seven flat five. Why not just take that up and play it as an F, F sharp minor seven flat five? Now, as far as the function of of this this chord goes, it's it's really a two chord in the key of E minor. We could look at it that way, but let's just stick to spellings right now. F sharp minor seven flat five, F. F minor seven. Right, so we have that that um, flat, the minor seven and the and the minor three, and then we just take that down E minor. Okay, and now we go down to an E flat. Uh, you know, I'm just looking at this as a as a diminished triad. Uh, you can you can just take a look at the at, at, in this case what my fingers are doing. Uh, this is uh, comes from a diminished arpeggio. A diminished arpeggio uh, is is uh, diminished chord is equal division of the octave. Equal division of the octave chord. Uh, meaning that it's just made up of minor thirds, consecutive minor thirds. So minor third, minor third, minor third, minor third, minor third. 
you can hear that. Right, and it acts as a passing chord going back to the two. With you, know, it's just as we did at the beginning, right? D minor 7, G7. To the C major 7. All right. Um, so, so we have this chromatic passage here, which is pretty cool. You know, the, the F sharp minor seven, let's just look at the bass notes, right? F sharp, F, E, E flat, G. So I'm just going through the roots. If I just went through the roots from the top, It's just that two five one, and we have the okay. So it's really, really a wise idea to be able to hear your way through uh, the bass lines um, because if you're, especially if you're playing with a bass player. Um, well, not especially if you're playing with a bass player. It, 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 you know, it's it's equally as valuable if you're playing with a bass player, or if you're not, if you're just playing solo bits, uh, the 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 um, uh, doing a solo arrangement, uh, because the bass line is going to indicate where the chords are going. All right, and uh, then we have a B flat seven. B flat seven's got nothing to do with the key of C major. <laughs> And, and and so that 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 should tip you off. Something's going to happen here. It's a five chord. You know, sevenths uh, uh, sevenths like a B flat seven, a dominant seventh type chord, is uh, the best way to interpret it immediately is as a five chord. And this is a five chord leading to its one chord of E flat major, and we call that a modulation. We just modulated. We went from B flat seven to E flat major seven, right? So we modulated, we changed key, and then we make a reference back to C major. And E flat again. To C major again. And then we so we have this modulation, you know, that 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 went to E flat. Uh, which is pretty important to know if you're going to solo over the tune. And then we return, you know, be, return back to the C, the key of, of, of C major. What, what, how do we, how do we get from, from this, from this B flat, uh, from the key of C to B flat and then jumping into E flat? Well, we've sort of, our, our platform is C. We cadenced it to the key of C here. We finished with C. And, uh, and and so we've resolved. We you know so we can really go anywhere after after that point, but we stay in a, in a closely related key. You you may wonder how E flat is closely related to C major. Again, it's the parallel. Um, uh, it's it, it's from the parallel minor key, right? So it's like it's like we're in the key of C minor, except we're playing the three chord, which is E flat major seven. So um, a, a, an excellent way to think of this is either as E flat major seven, or you can you, you, you can think of it as uh, as the parallel minor key, right? And then C, E flat. chromatic thing again ok 
Okay, so now uh, let's take let's just take a look at the form of the tune. We have these eight measures at the beginning, uh, but that just go two five one with that one borrowed chord from the key of uh, the parallel minor of C minor, and then we move to um, uh, we move to the uh, um, that chromatic bit. Uh, moving down from the uh, from the F sharp minor seven flat five, this is the progression that you will find in lots of other tunes. The F minor would be would be seen also as uh, as the uh, four minor chord, which also comes from the parallel minor key, right? And then and then the uh, the two chord uh, three chord. I'm sorry, C D E minor, right? So E minor passing diminished. Uh, moving to the two chord, this really leads to the two chord, to the five chord, to the one chord. At this point, I would suggest that you, you know, you could, you'd have the material you need to memorize these changes. Uh, and then we play that again. So we, we have the first, the first uh, uh, eight, and then another, another eight giving us, uh, giving us 16 measures. Um, and then uh, we move to the uh, uh, to the center section, which which is uh, uh, ju just eight measures, and then we repeat uh, the, uh, eight measures that we that we had here at the top. All of that you do you do the math will add up to a thirty two measure form or A A B and back to A again. Okay, and in 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 each case. All right, so uh, so that's sort of an analysis of uh, of night and day. Uh, now, if if you want to get through this, uh, I would suggest spelling the chords out as as I you know as I was suggesting. Um, uh, look at the, the, the be able to actually say you know here's my root, here's the minor seven, and I'll add a three on top, and I should add that flat five. One, two, three, four, five. And that'll that'll help you to look at chords differently, not as a as a finger shape and, and as a visual uh, representation of some kind of you know like like graph or something. Uh, but but you should be able to spell the chord out, listen to the sound of the chord. And uh, and that'll help you in your in your improvisation as uh, as well because obviously improvisation is going to be largely single note lines, and those single note lines should reference the chords. They should imply the the underlying chord progression. Yes, there's lots of different uh, uh, different um, um, substitutions that you can use for each of these chords, but you know again that's another topic. First of all, build the foundation. Of the essential elements of the of the tune, uh, and so and you understand that this is a subdominant, this is a dominant function, this is a tonic function, and so on. Uh, that would be very helpful. Okay, you can take it through the arpeggios as well if you want to spell short arpeggios. Right. There's my flat five. There's my three, seven. Okay, you can hear the changes. That's sort of the idea. That's that, that that's moving toward uh, toward understanding the chord functions uh, by by moving through the chords and and turning them into single note lines. Another topic. Okay, um, so I'll leave it there for this video. I'm going to move to a second video in this uh, in this same grouping, and and this time I'm going to uh, work through the uh, the play along track. Uh, with some of the things that we have covered in in this video. I, I hope that was a help to you. It's probably um, uh, probably some new information there that you may not have considered in the past. Uh, this chart comes from the Real Book series. <coughs> it's um, uh, the, the Real Book is is a good, 
a solid um, representation of of these classic tunes. It does also give you a little bit of a um, uh, discography here. I mean, that you can hear this tune with Stan Getz and Bill Evans, or on on a uh, Frank Sinatra album called Swing Affair, and, and there's probably a hundred other places you can hear it as well. Uh, this is a classic standard that I that that everyone has to have in their repertoire, uh, and and that's the beauty of jazz uh, because you can meet up with other guys that you've never met before, and you can play a tune like this, and you all know where you're at, right? Especially when you're memorizing the tunes, you know, jazz really does need to be memorized. Uh, it's it 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 can't be. Uh, it can't be read, um, really. Uh, you know, you have to start by being able to understand the progression and uh, and memorize that progression, and then play over the changes. Okay, uh, either in arpeggios or scales or chords, whatever the case might be. If this video was helpful to you, like, subscribe. It helps the algorithm immensely. Buy me a coffee. Buy one of my books, which you can get on Amazon, and please leave a question. I get back to all the questions with fairly lengthy answers. So thanks for stopping by. Thanks for your support, and we'll see you real soon.